بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful uh, dear respected viewers we welcome you to the third episode or lecture on level two uh, you remember last time we talked about this miraculous event uh, exemplified in the uh, miraculous birth of Jesus uh, peace be upon him and that also he spoke uh, at uh, uh, his uh, uh, childbirth what do we get or what do we uh, learn or what is the benefit or the revenue of such important happening we can summarize it in two issues one that this miraculous event came to clarify and to ascertain the innocence the innocence of Mary, may Allah be pleased with her, and to remove all kind of uh, accusations uh, that her people uh, held about her. The second thing, and the second benefit, is that this happening came to fulfill the prophecy, the prophecies, uh, the previous prophecies that uh, this will take place and there will be the coming of the Messiah. So it was, uh, you know, the talk uh, of the people, both the elite and the common, they were talking about this uh, important uh, event. So uh, both the scholars, the common, even the Romans heard about this, who were ruling Palestine at that time, he, they heard about this uh, great event. Uh, talking about the uh, the common, uh, were they uh, awaiting for this uh, event, the coming of the Messiah? Yes, they were awaiting for this uh, to happen. Uh, but uh, contrary to their expectation, they were expecting that uh, the, the that uh, the Messiah will come from the descent or the descent of uh, David rather than the Levites. Why are they keen on this? They, why they were keen that they uh, hoped that he will come uh, from the descent of uh, David? Uh, they were uh, keen uh, about this because they were thinking that this lineage represents the uh, golden age, the golden era of the kings so they were concerned very much that their expectancy that a king uh, is, is coming rather than a reformer or a prophet uh, after that dr Gharama uh, reminded uh, the participants in the course of uh, the long chain of kings uh, from the uh, they were the kings uh, from uh, Jodia uh, consisting of uh, 19 uh, 19 uh, kings uh, just uh, you know it will be illustrated to you dear uh, participant so uh, he just sufficed by talking about the first three kings that is Rehabam, Abiyam and Asa uh, then continuing later on for the uh, remaining to complete 19 kings that will be shown to you on the uh, on the illustrations so this is a, a big chain of kings uh, consisting of 19 kings that came after uh, Solomon the last king the 19th king uh, was uh, massacred he was killed by Nabuchodonosor and uh, he was killed in a very savage way uh, it is enough to tell you dear listeners that uh, his eyes were uh, poked uh, with a hot uh, nail uh, not only that he was uh, drawn on the ground uh, through carts uh, so he was uh, killed uh, by uh, by this uh, savage uh, leader and the remaining of the children of Israel, they were taken into slavery and into captivity. Now, when we talk about this chain uh, of kings, 
we noticed that the children of Israel, they were longing, they were talking all the time, they were really hoping for the restoration of such a royal king represented in those 19 uh, kings. Uh, as a matter of fact, they even inserted uh, news and uh, narratives about uh, those uh, kings. Uh, and uh, they just uh, uh, managed to, uh, they were so uh, amazed and so uh, happy uh, about this old heritage uh, of the chain of kings. Now, uh, Dr. Garama moves to talk about the position of the uh, scholars, the elite with relevance to the Messiah himself. He reminded uh, the participant that we should distinguish between two sects of those scholars or elite. The first sect, as has been mentioned before, the, is, uh, uh, is the Sadducees. Uh, we know that they are from uh, Levites. And also, uh, sometimes uh, the term rabbis is uh, used to describe uh, them. The second sect uh, are called the uh, Pharisees, and uh, they were from the descent of Jehuda uh, uh, and Benjamin. Uh, of course, uh, both sects, they were so strong, so obstinate, that they, none of them, none of these sects defeated the other. So they used their influence to attack the prophets of the other sects. And that is why we started to hear a lot of false accusations, unfortunately, against Moses and Aaron on one side, and against uh, Solomon and David on the other side. As a matter of fact, they reach the falsification and the accusation to the extent that they accused Moses that he rejected the mission. And they also they accused Aaron that it was him who uh, made up this idol, while we know very well that it was the Samari who made this calf. And on the other side, uh, those, uh, the other party, they started to uh, defame uh, Solomon and David, uh, they even reached uh, uh, the, the, the stage that they uh, claimed that Solomon himself was a disbeliever, God forbid. Uh, also, they made all kind of uh, accusation and they also they questioned the uh, chastity of uh, the mother of Solomon, accusing David that he had an illicit relationship with the mother of Solomon. So, uh, dear viewers, you can notice that there were a lot of exchanges of uh, accusations uh, and attacks and slanders uh, between these two sects. However, they come to agree, both sects, on the animosity against Jesus. Uh, this animosity turned into a, pl a big plot, a big plan to kill the Messiah. When we talk about uh, their way of life, their style of life, we notice that uh, they were uh, materialists, they oppressed people, they even violated their honor, uh, they tampered with the uh, scripture, with the Torah, uh, they exploited the people and they took their uh, their money and exploited them in all kind of uh, ways. Even uh, John, uh, you know, was not uh, saved from their accusation, although we know he was a very virtuous uh, person. It is enough that the Holy Quran described uh, John as a noble and hasura. Hasura in Arabic, it refers that he does not look at women. He is a very a person trustworthy and a very chaste uh, person. Uh, he, uh, you know, unlike what was happening and what was prevalent at that time, that there were a lot of corruption, especially when it comes to women. Uh, even uh, some narration 
says that even they used to commit uh, adultery and uh, fornication within the uh, sacred places, within the mosques and within the uh, places of uh, worship. And then to have someone like uh, Aaron, for example, or John, to be accepted or exempted from such corruption, this worth really uh, appreciating and a lot of appreciation and admiration. Now, uh, we mentioned that those two sects, although they had a lot of differences, but however, they agreed on getting rid of the uh, Messiah. Uh, why is this? Uh, simply because they know that Jesus, the Messiah, came to revive the Ten Commandments. He came to revive the Torah. And then he reminded them of the values, ethics uh, mentioned in the Ten Commandments. And this will ruin their corrupted life. They will not be happy about uh, such thing. To uh, move uh, Jesus and his mother to a safe place, Allah, God, has decreed that they will be, uh, mo they will be moved to uh, a hill where uh, they have uh, all the uh, sustenance. Uh, they will have a spring. And also, they will be in a safe place away from all these plots and the, uh, the, these schemes done against uh, them. Uh, many commentators, they talk about the location, where is the location of this place. But uh, Dr. Garam emphasizes that we should not busy ourselves with the location itself because this will deviate our attention from this, the important message that uh, can be uh, summarized in the following that God to save Jesus for the important mission to come uh, he, uh, he and his mother were in a haven in a safe in a shelter place so we should not busy ourselves where the location of this uh, hill and this spring of water that they moved to uh, to live there in order to be away from all kind of dangers and schemes made against them. Now, uh, Dr. Karama raises a very important question. Were there any role performed by Zakaria with relation to moving and taking Mary, may Allah be pleased with her and her blessed son, to this place, to this uh, safe place? There must be. Uh, he come to the conclusion that there must be uh, a role that he played uh, because after all he was the guardian he was the one who was looking after Mary and her uh, newly born uh, child so uh, there must be uh, it is very very uh, likely that uh, surely he had uh, a role uh, to, to play and uh, also uh, we should uh, come to know that due to the influence and the effort that Zachariah is trying to do to protect uh, the Messiah, he became a target for those two sects, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Uh, some narrations, some commentators say that uh, they killed him in a very savage way. Uh, some commentator, they say that he was, uh, you know, uh, they, they even used the uh, saw to cut his uh, body into pieces. Uh, and this is uh, no surprise because uh, those uh, two sects, you know, they are against all kind of reform. Now uh, we come to talk about the uh, important uh, mission and role that the Prophet uh, John uh, came to perform. Uh, this role is to pave the way, to prepare the people uh, and to remind the people of all good values of the Ten Commandments in order to prepare them for the awaited important event and that is the coming of the Messiah. So the people, they waited for 30 years until uh, the Messiah became of age and then he would come to revive the Torah and also to the, uh, revive the Ten Commandments. Of course, what is the response? As for the, uh, there are two responses. As for the common, they were uh, waiting for him in order to appoint him 
as a king. On the contrary, on the other side, uh, those scholars or these two six that we have mentioned, they waited for him in order to conspire against him because they know that he will uh, reveal uh, all the corruption or corrupted acts that they are doing within the society. Uh, noticing the continuous uh, preaching and uh, reforms that uh, the prophet uh, John uh, used to practice and he used to remind uh, the people of the Ten Commandments and also remind them of whatever is, is good for them, they uh, decided that they should uh, know about his, his reality, who is he. So uh, both the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they sent uh, people to ask and to, to ask uh, the prophet John, who is he? So they asked him, are you the Messiah? And he said, uh, no, I am not the Messiah. The Messiah is coming after me. So they said, uh, are you uh, the prophet? And because, you know, this, we should stop for a while about, uh, about this point because this shows that they were expecting the coming of Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, because they ask, are you the prophet? So they were expecting the coming of a prophet uh, after the Messiah. Uh, he said, of course, he said, no. So they said, are you Elijah? He said, uh, no. Uh, now, Dr. Gharama raised a question. Why in particular they asked him uh, about Elijah. Uh, the answer is uh, according to their prophecy that uh, Elijah ascended to heaven, uh, but in our uh, prophetic tradition there is nothing that confirms uh, such a claim. However, in, yes, in, in, in the Holy Quran there is a confirmation that it was Enoch that has uh, ascended to the sky and there is a, a very clearly stated uh, uh, Quranic verse which says that and we have appraised him in a very high place. And this is the chapter of uh, Mary, verse 57. So coming back to uh, Prophet uh, John, after they ask him all these questions and he keeps saying that uh, no, no. So they said, who are you? So he said, if you go back to uh, your uh, books and your scripture, you notice that I have been described as the outstanding sound in the wilderness that comes to pave and to ease the way of the Lord and make all these paths straight and straightened. So uh, he is referring to uh, the uh, prophesizing of the uh, coming of the Messiah. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, the, the, uh, the evidence that we have from the Quran uh, that reflects the mission of uh, the Prophet John that he came to, uh, to, to tell about the coming of the Messiah. Uh, if we go to the chapter Al-Imran, verse uh, 39, we notice that the word uh, is confirmed that he came to confirm the word of God. And we know that the word of God is uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. So he came to confirm the coming of Jesus, peace be upon him, and also to encourage the people to strengthen their faith and to believe and to support the coming uh, Messiah. Now we go back to, into another scene. That is uh, the scene when uh, the Messiah, when Jesus, peace be upon him, and his mother uh, moved to the province of Galilee, and in particular to Nazareth. So when he became of age and he became a, a young man, he took his mother and he took her to the north part of uh, Palestine to a province uh, called Galilee, and uh, it is uh, not far from the uh, Tabaria Lake, and there where he uh, settled with his uh, mother in the city of Nazareth. And that is why uh, you notice that uh, many of the disciples, besitting or near uh, Jesus the Messiah, 
uh, are uh, really from uh, Galilee. And also, they were also from the city of Nazareth. And that is when we receive the term uh, the Nazarites, referring to the city of Nazareth. Here, Dr. Gharama uh, comes to uh, uh, find a kind of attribution to the name of an Nasara. Uh, when we talk about terminology here, we notice that there are two opinions mentioned by Dr. Gharama. One, that maybe this term used to refer to the Christians may be used in order, and it is derived from the city Nazra, so we call them Nazarites. Other opinions say, uh, no, maybe it is referred to a Quranic verse that says that uh, the disciples, they said, we are the supporter in Allah's cause. So maybe this name, uh, the uh, Christian Nasara, has been used from Nasr in Arabic, which means to support. Uh, whether it is that or this, uh, he come to emphasize that the term Christian and Christianity is new. Uh, it was uh, used later on at the time of the Messiah. They didn't, you know, such term did not exist. Uh, exist. Uh, they did not use the term Christians and Christianity referring to the uh, followers of the Messiah. Uh, it was just uh, conquered uh, later on. Uh, and in the matter of fact, at that time when it was uh, introduced, it was a kind of insult. Uh, to to the people, uh, so with time, the, uh, the we started to hear about Christianity and Christians. But this is new, and it was introduced very later on. Then he makes a simile between the use of the term uh, Muhammadans, referring to the Muslims. Uh, of course, it is an honor to be affiliated and to affiliate things to. Christ to Jesus and to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him but the problem is the connotation that this term carries the connotation that if you say Muhammadans maybe will people will think about Christians and Christ the worshiping of Christ so they might come to the conclusion that if we call or if we misname misname this is a misnomer really if we misname the Muslims by calling them Muhammadans we are giving a false image or impression to those who do not know much about Islam that we worship Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And from far from this, uh, the, the Muslims are monotheists and they worship none but God. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, is uh, glorified and respected as a mighty prophet who came to deliver the message. Now we come to uh, another scene when Jesus, peace be upon him, and his mother uh, moved out from Nazareth. So uh, he came, uh, he left uh, Nazareth, and he started his, message, his mission. He moved to uh, Jerusalem. Uh, before that, uh, uh, we'll talk about the meeting between the prophet John and Jesus. Uh, and uh, Dr. Garama mentioned that uh, the prophet John is uh, uh, older maybe a few weeks or months uh, than uh, all older than uh, Jesus peace be upon all of them so uh, they met uh, and uh, both of them they revived the Torah to the extent that it became new ripe and also they came to revive the Ten Commandments and also they brought the good tidings that is the prophecy about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be uh, upon him. And that the prophethood, the chain of prophethood, will, uh, will uh, move or will shift to the lineage of uh, Ishmael, uh, especially through the sons Kedar, referring, then ending with uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now uh, we come to another uh, topic, and that is what was the position and the status of the common uh, with relevance to uh, to uh, the to the uh, messiah they followed him wherever he goes because they were longing for uh, a coming king you see this is their utmost hope so 
they were uh, following him uh, every t- every place he goes they loved uh, jesus the son of mary and uh, uh, they wanted uh, they hoped that he uh, they wished that he was from the uh, the uh, descent of uh, david but uh, at the end uh, they did not give much uh, importance to this because at the end they want just a king uh, you know to remind them of the golden era when they have when they had this big chain of kings and now uh, we will uh, talk uh, about uh, uh, different matter and that is the entrance of Jesus peace be upon him to the Al-Aqsa mosque to Jerusalem to his surprise when he entered the Aqsa mosque he was shocked to find a group of money exchangers, cashier money exchangers, and there were uh, piles of gold and currency. And inside the mosque, they were practicing usury, which is prohibited on them. And they know this, it is mentioned. Yet they were, you know, uh, misusing these places of worship uh, for uh, something which is prohibited that is interest or usury. So uh, his response that he uh, th- casted away all their boxes and so on, and uh, he told them that these places are uh, for the worships and not uh, as a cave, uh, as he uh, described it, as a cave for uh, uh, a crazy, crazy man. This was not nicely received by the scholars because after all, they were materialists and they want you know to continue practicing this kind of usury so they were shocked and they did not uh, you know uh, like uh, this uh, happening so uh, their animosity against the messiah increased and uh, they started to confirm their uh, plan to massacre or to assassinate uh, the messiah peace be upon him so uh, since they are under the rule of the romans they had just a limited you know confined autonomy they couldn't do it themselves they couldn't kill jesus themselves so they went to the romans uh, they uh, gathered uh, a lot of money and also they used or misused women temptation to get those leaders and those who are in command from the romans to uh, uh, execute their plan by uh, killing or giving the order for Jesus to be uh, killed. So uh, what happened, uh, they uh, uh, talked to the governor of Jerusalem that uh, they even made a false accusation that Jesus came in order to threaten the rule of the Romans and that he claims he is a king and that he is gathering the people in order to revolt against the Roman Empire, which was really all false. But however, they claim this and uh, they uh, use their bribes, you know, of this gold and so on to the uh, commanders or the governor of Jerusalem in order to convince him to, uh, uh, to arrest Jesus, uh, peace be upon him. Uh, of course, he uh, sent uh, with them Uh, Finally, he was convinced under this temptation and these bribes. So he sent with them uh, some uh, people, some soldier, in order to do the uh, arrest. Here, we should uh, stop for a while to talk about uh, a very corrupted uh, Roman uh, leader by the name of Herod. Uh, This person, he was uh, ruling uh, Jerusalem. He was the governor. And he insisted in marrying his niece, which is really against all kind, all religions. So the people revolted uh, and they went against uh, such thing, you know. But as it is the habit of the Roman Empire, they were just concerned about accumulating as much money as they can from the people. And they thought that they will not intervene in such thing and leave the people to do whatever. So the uh, order to the governors, 
that they should not intervene with such thing and they consider it to be just a final, uh, just a, a personal matter. Because after all, they are uh, heathens, they are polytheists. So uh, such thing, you know, such thing related to morality and ethics will not be of their concern. Their concern is nothing but materialism, just to gather uh, all these uh, taxes uh, from the uh, people. So nothing was done against this. And one night when this uh, niece was uh, dancing, and uh, this uh, Herod, uh, he drank and he was drunkard. He admired her very much and he told her to ask whatever she wants from him. And she asked for the head of the prophet, John. He was hesitant, uh, but she insisted on her uh, request. And finally, the prophet uh, John, uh, he was beheaded and they brought to this wicked, uh, vicious uh, lady, the head of John, the prophet John. The news came to Jesus, peace be upon him. So he was uh, touched very much and he just asked Allah for help. Uh, when we come to talk about the story of uh, Jesus, and that those uh, wicked people, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they got the green light uh, from the Romans, the governor, that, they, that they, uh, he will send his soldier to arrest uh, Jesus. Uh, so their role is just to locate his place and to pass to those soldiers, uh, where is he? Uh, so they just uh, you know, gave all kinds of bribes to the people in order to, uh, you know, uh, guide them to the place of uh, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. When uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, entered uh, Jerusalem, it coincided with a certain uh, festival or uh, celebration. So the disciples uh, came to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and then uh, they moved with Jesus to uh, the Mountain of Olives. There, uh, they wanted to uh, have the feeling of the celebration, so they asked uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, if he can, uh, you know, uh, request and invoke Allah to send to them a banquet. إذ قال الحواريون يا عيسى بن مريم هل يستطيع ربك أن ينزل علينا ما إذا من السماء قال اتقوا الله إن كنتم مؤمنين. And remember when the disciples said. O oh Jesus, son of Mary, can your Lord send down to us a table spread with food from the heaven? Jesus said, Fear Allah, if you should be believers. <laughs> They said, We wish to eat from it and let our hearts be reassured and know that you have been truthful to us and be among its witnesses. Now, uh, Dr. Garama uh, stops for a while to talk about this term banquet. Uh, of course, the Arabic word is uh, ma'ida. Ma'ida, it is referring to uh, something, you know, when as soon uh, the term ma'ida is used as soon as food is, is put over the table. So the reason that they ask for it is just to have a kind of reassurance, a kind of reassurance for their hearts and so on. And also uh, to uh, confirm that uh, Jesus uh, can uh, respond to their uh, request. قال عيسى بن مريم اللهم ربنا أنزل علينا مائدة من السماء تكون لنا عيدا 
تكون لنا عيدا لأولنا وآخرنا وآية منك وارزقنا وأنت خير الرازقين. Said Jesus, the son of Mary, O oh Allah, our Lord, send down to us a table spread with food from the heaven to be for us a festival for the first of us and the last of us and a sign from you and provide for us and you are the best of providers and now uh, what happened at the uh, the term that was used that uh, ask your lord if he can of course uh, if we take it literally uh, this is really blasphemy because God can do anything. There is no need for uh, even a prophet to ask God whether he can or not. This is out of question. But the terminology here, the term refers that make sure or uh, find out whether your Lord will respond to your request. So this is the meaning, uh, the real meaning of uh, the, this thing. Uh, anyhow, uh, this uh, banquet was done and uh, they call it, the terminology used for it is the Last Supper. And that is why you find uh, some of the illustrations and pictures of Jesus sitting in the center, surrounded by the disciples uh, while they are, uh, you know, celebrating this banquet and eating from this banquet. Uh, and from in the Christian terminology, they call it the Last uh, Supper. قال الله إني منزلها عليكم فمن يكفر بعد منكم فإني أعذبه فإني أعذبه عذابا لا أعذبه أحدا من العالم Allah said, Indeed, I will send it down to you. But whoever disbelieves afterwards from among you, then indeed will I punish him with a punishment by which I have not punished anyone among the worlds. Now we come to talk about a vicious figure, and that is Judas of Iscariot. The reason that we describe him to be a wicked and vicious uh, disciple because the role that he played. Dr. Garama uh, mentioned that uh, a person who pretended to be loyal to the Messiah, to be one of the uh, obedient and loyal disciples, while he was completely different person. He was uh, really uh, wicked and through the temptations of the uh, the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees, he uh, made a great treason against the Messiah, and he was the one who guided the, the Roman soldiers to the place of uh, Jesus, uh, peace be upon him. Uh, he, as a matter of fact, he was among those who attended the banquet, but, uh, you know, he just uh, sold his... Uh, consciousness and his uh, honesty uh, for a materialistic gain and he was the person who spread the news about the uh, location of Jesus peace be upon him now we come to talk about uh, an important action that uh, Jesus peace be upon him uh, he was with his uh, disciples and then uh, he went to uh, a well in the house. He took a shower. He changed his clothes. And then he asked a question. He knew, of course, through a revelation from God, what are those Romans and Jews are planning for him. So he said, who will accept to have my resemblance? And he will be with me, referring that he will be with me in paradise. So uh, a young man uh, raised his hand and he said, yes, I am ready to receive uh, your resemblance. So I will be 
uh, arrested and persecuted rather than you. He noticed that he's uh, very young. So he told him, sit down. He asked the same question and the same response from the same young man. And the third time, he said, okay, it will be you. So uh, those people, the soldier, the Roman soldiers came and they arrested the, the disciple who took the resemblance of the Messiah, peace be upon him. Uh, Dr. Ghanam uh, talks about the rituals that usually take, used to take place before crucifixion. That they will, uh, this person who is about to be crucified, that he will be insulted, they will spit on him, they will drag him, even they will force him while beating him to carry the cross itself and to walk long distance, sometimes so many kilometers, until they reach with him to the site of the crucifixions. So this all happened and then we come to have the uh, interrogation when they ask him, uh, they ask uh, the person uh, who was, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, having the resemblance of Jesus about us to ask him uh, questions. But let's go back to uh, see what happened to Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, there were an opening in the roof so he just ascended to the sky uh, and then uh, you know as soon as this happened the arrest uh, took place the arresting of the took place now we come to talk uh, about uh, important uh, terminology here uh, the concept of ascension o was jesus peace upon the messiah was he dead then ascended uh, the answer is that no he did not die nor uh, slept he did not die nor uh, slept uh, the, the word motofik uh, it has really uh, a very important and deep meaning that is uh, when you took me up this is we called from when you uh, took me up so uh, Jesus uh, peace be upon him uh, did not die because this will be in contradiction with his second coming when he come and uh, rule and spread justice, then he will die a natural uh, death like any uh, human being. Uh, so uh, that's it. And this is what happened. This reminds us of the ascension of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he was ascended uh, with both his body and his soul. Uh, even, uh, you know, the, this, uh, this kind of uh, temporary death, in the Holy Quran, it is emphasized that when a human being, when they sleep, as if, you know, it is, they call it a small death. This means that their heart or their soul will depart their body during the time when they are asleep. Then those people who still have to their term, they still have, Allah has faith, they are still living, their soul will come back again and then they'll just wake up. As for those souls that whom Allah has destined that, you know, they have reached uh, their turn, the, the souls will be uh, withheld and death then will take uh, place. The uh, Quranic verses emphasizes that uh, uh, in these verses there is a sign that uh, Jesus peace be upon him uh, did not die nor did he sleep when he ascended to heavens. Uh, however, uh, because uh, his even his uh, miraculous, uh, you know, birth is different. So uh, things uh, are different when we come to talk about uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. So in short, we can say that Jesus ascended to sky with both his body and his soul. Now, uh, as we have said, uh, Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, ascended uh, through this opening in the roof to the heaven. And even uh, those 11 disciples, they saw him uh, ascending uh, to uh, heaven. Uh, the person, the, the person that resembled the disciple, uh, he was taken uh, for uh, interrogation. And uh, he was uh, interrogated. They took him to the uh, house of the governor the Roman government by the name of Pilate and uh, he started to ask him uh, questions. Uh, he would ask him, are you uh, 
the Messiah. So uh, it is a very embarrassing uh, question because if he says yes, he will be lying. If he says no, so what is the point? Uh, this uh, resembled disciple, he was uh, enough. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, clever enough that in order to avoid uh, lying, he would say, uh, when they ask him such an embarrassing question, he would say, you said, talking to the interrogator, you said it. Anyhow, uh, after this interrogation, the uh, Roman governor, uh, Pilate, he came to the conclusion that he is innocent and he has nothing to be arrested for. But in order to, uh, you know, assimilate this zeal uh, of those uh, uh, Sadhus and uh, Pharisees, he told them, listen, we have uh, a custom that every year I have the uh, privilege of pardoning one criminal. So, why don't we pardon him? Of course, he received a quick objection from those wicked people who were planning to uh, kill Jesus. And they said, uh, no, no, it must be him. Choose any other person. We can nominate to you another person. And they nominated Barabbas, which was real. He was really a real uh, criminal. They just uh, nominated his name to be pardoned. Uh, so uh, he said, but who will tolerate the sin? Who will carry the sin of this innocent person? So they were dare enough to say, we and all our gener coming generation will carry, will bear his sin, the sin of killing uh, the, uh, this innocent uh, person. Now we talk about the crucifixion itself. The Holy Quran emphasizes the fact that they neither crucified him nor killed him. But the resemblance of Jesus was put over another man, one of the disciples. And this is very much emphasized in the Holy Quran that Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, was uh, neither crucified nor killed. Uh, the conclusion is that uh, the Holy Quran make it very clear that Jesus, peace be upon him, neither was crucified nor were killed. But it was the resemblance of Jesus, uh, the resemblance of Jesus was put over another uh, person, one of the disciples, uh, and uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, ascended to, the, uh, heaven, to heaven, and it was the end of uh, life he will come again to clarify a lot of the misconceptions including the uh, the the operation or the claim of crucifixion itself uh, and also he will spread justice and it will be uh, then he will have the natural death that is uh, fated for every human being with this we conclude uh, longing to see you dear viewers in a future episodes that dr Gama is hoping that it will clarify a lot of um, certain maybe misconcepts that uh, some people have and also it might you know uh, shed some light upon the background uh, of uh, so many events that happens uh, throughout the life of the great prophet Jesus peace be upon him Akademie to tarif bil Islam Akademie to tarif bil Islam Akademie to tarif bil Islam